Guys, we are beginning uh, where, we're, where we're supposed to start this year. Limits. Not really. But that's most calculus classes start with limits. I do not. I start with derivatives and integrals. The reason I do that is because I want you guys to have all those rules in your head and using them early on to get those down because those are those are tools you're gonna use constantly. Um, but really where you're supposed to start in calculus, you start with the ideas is limits because derivatives come from limits and so do integrals. And I kind of showed you that actually as we started each unit. But we are going to be starting our, our unit with limits here. Um, so today, hopefully, you guys can tell me what a limit is by the end of the day. And you can also find the limit of a function using graphing calculators and tables. Now, this is the tedious way to do it. Um, it's not that bad. But there's other, there's more sophisticated ways to find limits that we'll get to, but they're not intuitively obvious why they work. Okay, but tables and graphs are a really nice intuitive way to um, to kind of give you the idea of what a limit's all about. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'd like you guys to start by calculating f of three. Yes. Um, It depends on what you're approaching. So, we'll, we'll talk about that. They do. They do. We'll get there. But I, I assume, if you're looking at the handout that I gave, the, the x is approaching 0. But we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. But for now, what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to do this. Find f of 3 for me, please. For those of you guys that are working it out, the tempting thing to say would be zero. It's not zero, though. Okay, what is it? It's undefined. It's undefined. Because it's zero over zero. zero, over zero. Dude, it's, so it's undefined. Because when you plug in zero, you get zero on the top. And usually, if the top of your fraction is zero, the answer is zero. But if your bottom is zero, that kind of wins. If your bottom is zero, that means it's undefined. So this function actually doesn't exist at that point, okay? But, even though the function doesn't exist, the limit does. What the heck is that? I'll show you. Here we go. So, I'm going to try to figure out what this function would equal if it did exist at that point. That's a weird that's a weird thing to say, but I'll say it again. I want to find out what would this function equal if it did exist at that point. Okay? So check this out. Even though it doesn't exist when I plug in 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in some numbers that are close to 3. So for instance, I'm going to start by plugging in 2.9. You guys agree 2.9 is pretty close to 3, right? Now that's not going to make the bottom 0. It'll make something really close to zero, but it won't make zero, so it's legal. If I plug it in, you actually get this. Okay? I didn't say it's going to make the fraction equal zero. I said it's going to make the bottom close to zero. If the bottom's close to zero, the top's going to be something else. When you put them together, you get this. Okay? Ah! Ah! You're right. I'm going to try to get closer, though. I want to get closer. So I'm going to plug in 2.99. I get that. I'm going to plug in even more. Oh, so the, the smiley, no, the, the bad face? I think I can't see. I don't have the Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we don't judge in here, buddy. This is a sad face. He's not bad, okay? Exactly. He's just having a tough day. All right. So what about it? Uh, I would say so it's what? Good. So here's the thing. The function does not exist at this point. But if it did, what would it be? If you one. You guys can see that as x gets closer and closer to 3, on both sides, I, I wasn't talking about the other side, but I plugged in numbers that were close to 3 on this side as well, right? As I approach 3 on both sides, the y value is approaching 1. So it's trying to get there. Yeah, exactly. Because, like I said, I did at the beginning of the year with slopes because 
derivatives come from limits. They are a limit. Um, but now we're actually going to do that. So now I want to show you guys a different perspective here. I want to show you this from the perspective of a graph rather than from a table. So I'm going to graph this function. <clears throat> So I typed in the function here on Desmos. This is what the graph looks like. You guys good? Now, we were what x value was I approaching? One. What x value was three. I approaching? I, I was approaching an x value of 3. So let's find where x equals 3. That's right about here, right? Yeah. So I'm going to zoom in. Here's where x equals 3. And then at 3. Right at 3. You see where it says undefined? Yes. Sir. The point doesn't exist. There is a hole. But, but, as I approach x equals 3 from the right and from the left, they're getting really close to a y value of 1. Okay? So even though there's a hole in my graph, the, the y value that would be there, if it was there, is a 1. Why wouldn't it just be like 3, comma, 1? It's undefined. And you guys saw at the beginning, right? When we plugged in three, that's undefined. You can't have zero in the bottom. So it's undefined. It doesn't exist. Um, so let's talk about what this all means then. What we just did was a limit. A limit is not when you touch something. A limit is when you approach something. You guys got the idea there? That function could never touch x equals 3, but it can sure as heck approach it, right? It's the difference between a brick wall and an electric fence. You can touch a brick wall. You better not touch the electric fence, though. You can get infinitely close. <laughs> But as soon as you touch it, you're going to get shocked, right? So that's what a limit is. A limit is like what you're approaching. Because the, the fence is still there, right? There is a value there. You can approach it. It's just that you can't touch it. That's what a limit is. So a limit is something you approach, whereas the value of a function is what you actually have at that point. So for these function, this function here, the function doesn't exist there but it is approaching a certain value. So here's the technical definition. I'll try to break it down for you a little bit. There's the notation. Let me read the sentence to you, and then I'll read the sentence again as I point at this. Ready? So the limit of a function f of x, so the limit of a function f of x is L. So the limit is L. On our last page, what was, what was L? What was the limit? It was approaching 1, right? So the limit of a function is L if f of x, which is just a fancy way of saying what variable? So the limit of a function f of x is L if the y value approaches that number. So the y value is approaching 1, right? If the y value approaches L as x approaches C. What was my C value in the last example? Three. three. My x was approaching 3. So as x was approaching 3, my y value was approaching 1. So the, I'm breaking down the math here. It's, math always words things in a very confusing language. So I'm trying to like read it to you. The limit of a function f of x is L if f of x approaches L as x approaches C from the left and the right. You can't do just one side. You can, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But the lim in order for that limit to be there, it has to come from both sides. Okay? Now here's the notation. Here's the math language because nobody wants to say this. So instead we have a shorter way of writing it. So the limit, the limit of a function f of x is L if f of x approaches L as x approaches C from the left and right. Okay? So the limit of f of x is L as x approaches C. Okay? So if I were to put this in the language of my last slide, 
the example, x was approaching what? C. 3. Three. Three. What was my function? F of D. F of D. F of D. Mm. F of x. What was the function? Okay, so the limit of this function as x approaches 3 was what? One. One. There you go. Okay, so that's the math language for that. And what this means is, is that as I, as I get closer and closer to 3 for the x value, the y value gets closer and closer to 1. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that in F, the, the limit is actually a Y value. Okay, the limit is a Y value. Is the limit always going to be a Y value? Yes. The X value is here. So the X value is part of the notation used when you write a limit, but the answer to that is a Y value. Ah, good question. You could ask, I could ask a question like that, sure. Okay, now let's talk about, I, I rewrote it for you guys in English here, a little bit clearer. The limit of a function is the y value it approaches, and this is your key word right here, guys, approaches, not what it equals, because it may not be able to equal that point. The, the limit of a function is the y value it approaches, as the x value approaches some specific number. Okay, that's what a limit is. Okay? Now, there is notation that we can use for coming at it from just the right or just the left. Because on the on the other example I gave you, we were coming at it from we were coming at three from the right and the left. Um, when you do that, then it's just the limit x approaches c. But if you want to just say about coming from the right only, then we put a little plus next to it. Okay? So, for example, on my, and if you want to say from the left, it's a little minus. So, if I were to back up here and go to this table again, this half of my table is the limit as x is approaching 3 from the right. This half over here is the limit as x is approaching 3 from the left of my function. And they're both meeting at 1. Okay? So you can have one sided limits. You can have ones that means comes from only one side. But when you're talking about just a limit, that, that suggests both sides at once, okay? Okay. You guys know that on Mean Girls, they say the limit does not exist, right? You know that? You guys, you guys seen Mean Girls? No. I'm, no. Well, there's a famous quote from the movie that everybody seems to know. It says, the limit does not exist. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to start off by talking about limits that do exist. And then I'll show you some things that maybe Lindsay Lohan meant when she said that. Uh, but for now, we'll talk about things that do exist. So if the limit from the left and right are both the same thing, then the limit exists. Okay? So if the limit from the right is L and the limit from the left is L, then the limit is L. Now, I think this makes a lot more sense when we talk about graphs. So L, was that an X value or a Y value? Y. It's a Y value. So if I'm approaching, like, let's, here's my X axis, right? Let's say I'm approaching, let's say I'm approaching 3. And as I come at it from the left, I'm approaching a Y value up here, right? But if I come at it from the right, I get a Y value down here that limit does not exist because they have different y values, right? Mm -hmm. But if they meet at a common point, then they're converging at a common point. And that, that, that means the limit does exist. Okay? So that's what this means. Oh, the other one is like this. So, 
Yeah. Oh, well, well, no, the example we looked at, are you talking about earlier today? Well, yeah, the graph did look like this, but we were looking at this point here. And so they did, were they meeting at the same spot? Yeah. They were. So that limit existed. How are you going to get the graph? Say that again. How are you going to get the graph? You know, we're actually not going to use the calculators for graphs today. We're just going to use it to calculate numbers really fast. Um, but we'll, we might get to that a little bit later. What, what were you saying, Marcos? I was saying so, despite it being undefined, it still exists. The limit the exists. The function does not. So, in other words, it's approaching something, but it never gets there. Okay. All right. So that's. That's how you can tell if a limit exists. Is that the limit from the right and left are the same? Then you're good. All right, so let's do an example here. Go ahead and find example one. All right. So once again, um, I'm approaching x equals 1. How do I know that? Because it says right here. I, so I want to find what is the limit of this function as x approaches 1. In other words, what y value is this function approaching? as x gets closer and closer to 1. Okay, and that's what we're going to find, and we're going to use a table to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick numbers that are really close to 1. And I'm just going to suggest you guys to always do it the same. Um, we're going to start by, on this side, you're going to add 0 .001. So what's 1 plus 0 .001? That's really close to 1, right? And then we're going to get a little bit further away from it. We're going to add 0 0.01. And then a little bit further away, and we get that. So we're going to add 1 1,000th, then a 100th, and then a 10th. Uh -huh. And on this side, we're going to subtract a 1,000th. We're going to subtract a 100th, and we're going to subtract a 10th. So if I take 0 0.001 away from 1, what would I have? Now, yeah, so we're going to plug all these in. Does that sound like fun? No. no. That's why we got the calculator. The calculator is going to do these for us pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how we can get the calculator to generate these answers for us really quick, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and turn on our calculators. There you are. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell our calculator what function we're using. We're using this function. So let's go ahead and let's go to y equals. And let's type it in. You might have to clear out the function that's already in there. All right, let's type it in. So parentheses x to the power of 3 minus 1, close parentheses divided by parentheses x minus 1. Um, when you're typing in rational expressions, fractions, you got to put the top in parentheses and the bottom in parentheses. Otherwise, your calculator doesn't know where the division starts and ends. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to get out of there. So push second, quit. And what I'm going to show you guys is a quick way to get all these answers with just a few button pushes. Ready? So the first, the first set of buttons you got to push is kind of um, a couple of strokes that you might not be used to. But after we do it the first time, you don't have to do it anymore. Ready? So we're going to, well, what I want to do is I want to get y1. I want to get that function that I just typed in. So we're going to go to vars. So push vars. It's right here. And then I want you guys to scroll over to y vars. So scroll over to the y vars. That means we're going to access the y variables. And then we're going to go to functions, so push 1. And we're going to choose y1 because that's the slot that we typed our function in on the y equals graph, right? So push 1. And now on my home screen, I have this. So what I want to do is I want to plug these numbers in to this function. The way you do that is just put parentheses and then type the number, so 0.9. Close your parentheses and then push equal. 
That's like you just plugged in that number to that function that we typed in under y equals. And I got 2.71. Now that's the most calculator work we have to do. After this, it's pretty easy. You don't have to keep doing, you do not have to keep going to variables and then whatnot. Here's what you could do. You could just bring this back. I'll show you. You push second and then push enter. It brings it back for you. And now we just scroll over and we type in the new number. What's my next number I want to type in? Enter. There's my next one. We're going to repeat that process. So second, enter. And now we're going to type in 0. 0.9999. Well, that's too many nines, but you got the idea. All right. But, so guys, what are we seeing here? The limit as x approaches what? As x approaches 1 from the left of this function. So the limit of my function as x approaches 1 from the left seems to be what? Three, three. It's getting closer and closer to 3. But in order for this limit to exist, the same thing has to be happening on the right side. Yes? I think I'm doing something wrong with my calculator because I'm getting negative numbers. Like I got like 46 when I got negative, Okay. My guess is probably what happened, you could just watch, but I'll look at it with you after this. But basically, my guess is you probably typed these in wrong on your y equal, y1 slot. Did you put them in parentheses? Huh. I'd have to look at it to know. There's... Oh, wait. I just have wrong. I forgot to put parentheses. Okay. All right. Well, let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's keep going. So second entry. Now I'm going to type in 1.001. And I get 3.003. And I'm just going to keep up this process until I'm done. If you guys want to delete something, you just put your cursor on top of it and push delete. Okay, so does it look like it's approaching the same number from the right? Yes. So that means the limit from the right of this function is also 3. So I'm going to put equals 3 as well. So since they're meeting at a common point, the limit exists, and therefore the answer is 3. Wait, wouldn't it be x approaching 1 right there? So you don't even need to like, calculate you have limit and then pull. over and what? So right here you have limit over x approaching three. When would be x approaching one? Well, x is approaching one. Yeah, right here. But the limit, remember the limit's a y value. The y values are approaching three. Oh, this equation right here on the bottom. You have limit. Oh, I wrote it wrong. Oh, you're right. Yes, I did do that wrong. I owe you a point. I wrote this wrong, guys. This yeah, is supposed to be. Right here, that's supposed to be one from the right. Thank you, Marcos. Good obs. Very good. Yes. So could they be up in two different numbers? Yes. Okay, so and we'll we'll look at something like that later. But for now, I just want you guys to get the idea. Now, can we skip all this and probably just look at one number to the left and right and get the answer? Probably. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need to do that whole table. But I like to at first, just so you guys can see that yes, it is getting closer and closer and closer to three. Okay? All right. So if you want to, you can just do the one right next to it. Um, now, another little note that I have down here, guys. A function is not always undefined at that value. For example, if I were just to get rid of this bottom here, could I just plug in one and get an answer? You could. And guess what? That would be the answer to the limit. But that, that kind of takes away from what a limit is. That makes students think, oh, it's just the y value you get when you plug it in. That's not true. A limit is what you're approaching. And, and so I pick ones where the y value actually doesn't exist. 
But just so you know, a function is not always undefined at the value you're approaching. I just think it's a good way to introduce limits. All right, so we're going to do a guided practice here. Yes, my son. All right, so I'm going to ask, yes, sir? You should get a paper. You should have one. All right, my first question to you is, don't say it out loud, because I'm going to call on somebody, but I want to know what number goes above the sad face. Freaking man. Freaking man. But he's right, it is zero. How does he know that? Tells you right here. That's what you're approaching. Now I want you guys to pick a number. I want you to tell me what numbers go in these two boxes to the immediate left and right. Take a moment to think about it. You, you know? Okay. What, what goes over here? I agree. Do you have this one too? What? You're right. If you add 0 0.001 to 0, you get that. If you subtract 0 0.001 from 0, you get that. Now you guys get to do your calculator work here. So I'll help you guys type it in if you want, at least the function. So let's clear all this out. Let's go to y equals. So how do we type this in? You're going to do x divided by parentheses. You got to put that whole denominator in a set of parentheses. Square root, second, and then here. And then x plus 1. Now I'm going to close the parentheses, but that, that closes the square root parentheses. We're still not done with the denominator. The denominator also has a minus 1 that's outside of the square root. So we're going to put minus 1, and then we close the denominator parentheses. So that's how we would type that in. Okay. Go back to your home screen. Now, if you guys want to be cheaters, you can just push second entry because it's it should still be there, the y1. But don't be a cheater. Practice the variable thing. See if you can find it. Vars, y vars, function y1. Vars y bars function y one. See if you can bring that up. Huh? Are you done with your test? Yeah. Oh, did, did you already give it to me? Oh, okay. Wow, that's really fast. Nate, you got it so wrong. It's crazy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Same exact number. Because they're happy, bro, because like, they're approaching two. But they just they do the same thing. How do you like this? It's two point negative. Oh, yeah. just, it just affects the like, Thank you. sign, though. OK. So guys, what is the limit of this function? As x approaches 0 from the left, two. it seems like it's getting really close to a y value of 2, right? Yeah. Is the same thing happening on the right? Yeah. OK. So the limit must be what then? 2. So I'm going to put equals what? 2. Final answer. OK? That, that's the idea. So I think you guys have got the idea. Notice I didn't do these other squares. It's not really necessary. Um, you could probably get away just doing the ones right next to it. All right. So student practice. Don't forget when you type this in your calculator, put parentheses on these. Okay? Go for it. Yeah. I had like a very sexy shirt Oh, I'm gonna Samantha, what am I plugging in? Two. Good. Andy, what number goes over here? Isaac, what number goes here? Uh, negative 
No. <laughs> no. You want to subtract one thousand from here. I'm gonna let Maya tell you what. There you go. So if you subtracted point zero zero one from two, you get that. Okay. Now to be fair to him, for you guys who were giggling, he was taking the test. So. He wasn't All right. He pointed at me, and I wasn't even laughing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you. All right. What What did you get here? Mm -hmm. I got point nine 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 nine. And Manny, what'd you get here? I got you said what? No, I don't need your answer. I got um point nine. Oh, okay. No, no. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me one second. I did that first one and as of right now, you know, I'm going to click forward to the side one. It is point zero zero and I got 1.001. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask Ricardo, what's the, what's the limit then? One. All right. Because the limit from the left and right are both coming together at y equals one. All right. Now, that's when the limit exists. Let's look at a few situations where it doesn't exist. We already talked about this one. If the limit from the right is not equal to the limit from the left. Now on a graph that would look like this. We don't know what the limit is. The limit doesn't exist. So in other words, if you were to look at a graph, they wouldn't meet. There's no y value that they have in common. You're not approaching some y value. You're approaching two different y values from two different directions. So here's an example for this one. Um, now, in the interest of time on this one, we're gonna I'm just gonna buzz through it real quick, show you the answers and what it looks like. Okay. Um, well I called it a student practice, but I just don't think I want to take the time to make it a student practice. Here we go. Um, what goes here, guys? Zero. Okay, now zero doesn't exist because if you plug in zero, you get zero on the bottom. What am I gonna plug into the left? Point zero zero one. So if we take one thousandth away from zero, that's what we get. What do we get if we add a thousand? Point zero zero one. Now, if you were to plug in this number, I'll show you. We can actually do this just by hand without a calculator. What's the absolute value of that? Point zero zero one. And anything divided by itself is? One. one. What do you think this would give me if I plugged it in? Oh, wait a minute. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Back to this. We're plugging in a negative here, right? Mm -hmm. Negative on top. Oh. I forgot to do it here. So what would this be? Negative. Positive divided by negative would be negative. How about this one? The top will be positive and the bottom will be positive. What will I get? Positive one. The limit from the left is one. The limit as x approaches zero on the left side is negative one. But the limit as x approaches zero from the right is positive one. They're not meeting eye to eye. The limit does not exist. So what we're gonna say then is we're gonna say equals D and E does not exist, okay? If you were to graph this function, that function would look like this. I'm not going to worry about graphing it right now. But it would look like that. They're not meeting. There's no common y value that they're converging to. Okay? So that's one reason why Lindsay Lohan may have said the limit does not exist. Although I don't think this is why she said I think it's another one I'm going to share with you. Yeah. I think it worked because I can kind of move my finger. <laughs> So for the problems, it just does not exist. Yep. If you don't, if it doesn't look like this side is approaching the same thing as this side, then it's no good. Say so does not exist. But we're going to look at two other special circumstances. Here we go. What if 
what if as I as x is approaching some number, the y value goes up forever? Meaning as you get closer and closer to this x value, the y value just starts increasing like crazy. So for instance, on the right side, I'm getting closer and closer to this line of x equals whatever, but y just keeps getting higher and higher and higher as I get closer and closer to it. That's like a vertical asymptote, isn't it? How about here? What if I do the same thing on the left side and it also shoots up to infinity? Is it reaching a y value? No. No. The limit does not exist. I think this is why the limit didn't exist for Lindsay Lohan. But it's okay. Watch it. Mean Girls. Good show. All right. Anyway. But, but, you know what? I'm not going to put, I'm not going to write D and E here. You know what I'm going to write? I'm going to write infinity because it's a specific kind of answer. They're both going up into infinity. What else could happen? They could both go down to infinity. So, for instance, in this case, what if as I approach x equals c from the right, it, my y value drops infinitely far? Well, then we would say the limit is negative infinity. But does the limit exist? No. It still doesn't exist, but we could be more specific and we could say negative infinity. And yes, it matters. Um, I have seen AP Calc tests where they've had three answers. Infinity, negative infinity does not exist. They want you to pick the right one. Even though all three of those are does not exist, there's a better answer. Okay? So if you have this where it's negative infinity on both sides, then it does not exist. All right? Now let's look at one more situation. What if I approach my function from the right and it does one thing, but as I approach on the left, it goes in the opposite infinity. It still doesn't exist. And now you cannot say that the limit is infinity anymore. That's no longer an option. Now all you can say is does not exist. That's all you can say. You can't say it's infinity because it's not. You can't say it's negative infinity because it's not. It's going different ways. So all you can say is, ah, the limit doesn't exist. Okay? So those are three other limit facts. Now, I, I really like the graph approach with these. Seeing it on a table is a little bit confusing. Okay? But we're going to do it anyway. So, here we go. I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to let you guys do the last one. You ready? Find your student practice number three. Did I print this for you? Okay. Here we go. Table time. Um, Table time. All right. What? Can I plug in zero? I would get undefined, right? Sad time. But we can sure as heck approach zero. So let's do that. What would it be to the left? How about to the right? Okay. I don't think we need to get fancy with our calculators here. I think we could just type it in. 1 divided by this, right? Because that's all it would be. So would you guys just do 1 divided by negative 0 0.001 for me? It's negative 1,000. You know what that means? You know what that means? That means as I get closer and closer to 0, the, the y value shoots down. Isn't that a really big negative number? Yes. That means as I get closer and closer to 0, the y value is rocketing downward. Which means that, if you don't believe me, plug in the number even closer. Try doing 1 divided by negative 0.0001. See what you get. What do you get there? You get something even smaller, right? So what's happening here on the left? As x approaches 0 from the left of my function here, what's happening to the y values? They're dropping down to negative infinity. Let's do the right side. Can you guys plug in 0 0.001? <coughs> what do you get? Okay, now clearly, can are these going in the same direction? No, one's shooting upwards on the right. So as I come this way, it's shooting up to 1,000. And as I come this way, it's shooting down to negative 1,000.
So the limit as I approach zero from the right is infinity. They're not equal. What do we say? Does not exist. I want you guys to do this one. See if you can find the answer to that. I'll give you a few minutes. No, different. That math problem's not going to solve itself. What? Fine, I'm sorry. Intellectual. <laughs> It's so hard to say sorry. It makes you feel like you're an idiot. I don't feel like you're an idiot. What? Steve Hardy. What? What? Oh, yeah. Isn't the answer the same? You're a true gamer, bro. Oh, no. For some reason, you all buy my own super so you have the games like with the best and pull back to the one. You went way over my head, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it was a re the game or is the bottom yeah, one a million? Oh, I forgot to pause it. Huh? The bottom one is a million? I'm going to ask Eric. Eric. Dabi. What goes here? Very well done. Well done. Yay. What goes here? Beautiful. Beautiful. Maya. What goes here? Dario, what goes here? Negative million? Oh, it's positive. That's okay, though. Let's try Jacob. What goes here? A million. Now, that, that might tempt you to think, oh, the limit's a million, because it's coming in a million on both sides, right? But the reason it's not is because, that's a, first of all, it's a huge number. So that should make you think. The next reason is because, guess what? If you were to plug in 0 .001, it's not going to be getting, like, if you plug in, like, three zeros now, right? 0 .0001, it's not going to be getting closer to a million. It's going to get even bigger. So what happens is, as we're approaching zero, the y value goes up. It's just shooting up. Now, what's my answer, then, to this limit? It's infinity. We don't, you can, it technically does not exist. That's true, because it's not reaching a y value. But we can specifically say infinity because it is going up on both sides, okay? So, once again, I would encourage you guys to include these lines. I don't know if they make sense to you, but as we come this way, it goes up, and this way it goes down, and these ones, they both go up. I'm going to do that more later on. You don't have to, but, yeah. That's a great question. So, so Zach's question was, would they mark you down if you said the limit does not exist? I don't know, because I've never seen them do that in an FRQ, but I will say this, Zach. I've seen this question on AP multiple choice questions, and yes, I have seen them do things where they put does not exist, negative infinity, and positive infinity. And even though does not exist and infinity are both true, they want the infinity. They want the better answer. So my suggestion to you is be as specific as you can. All right, so we're done for today. We will continue our chat about limits on Thursday. I won't see you guys tomorrow.